So this is a weird problem that always ends up on dynamics exams. And what it basically is, is one of those carnival rides in which you are right here and we have this thing spinning so fast that you're sort of glued up against the wall and you can't move and you feel pressed against the wall. Now what's happening here is that normal acceleration, that centripetal acceleration. And remember it's always directed towards the center of the circle. Now of course if I have acceleration that means there must be some force acting on me and that force is actually the normal force from the wall. It's got to be pretty big to create such a high acceleration. Remember this acceleration is that normal acceleration v squared over r and uh, this thing is typically spinning very fast to give you a lot of speed. So my normal acceleration very big and therefore the force needed to keep you normally accelerating is very big as well. Now the reason that you do not slide down the wall here, the reason that you are kind of held up against gravity is because of static friction. Remember static friction, static friction's maximum depends on the normal force. The more that two surfaces are getting squashed together, the bigger the normal force. And the bigger the normal force, the bigger the static friction. So because of this huge normal force between you and that wall, there's going to be a very big static friction that actually holds you up against your weight against the force of gravity. So this is the operating principle for this ride and it's the operating principle for this whole class of problems. So there's a whole bunch of problems that look just like this. Another one that I've seen is basically a cone that's spinning about its axis and you have some crate right here that's just not moving. You would think it would slide down but it's not. Same exact thing. So because of this, I know that normal tangential approach is the way to go. If we were to look at this at a top view, and if our object was the ground, we would just basically see this brown object spinning in a circle like this. It's really spinning in a circle over and over again. And because of that, I know that my acceleration it's going to be that normal acceleration towards the center of the circle that we're on. And there won't be any tangential acceleration because this apparatus is spinning at a constant speed. Don't forget the tangential acceleration is the change in the speed with time. So if we're, kit, if we're spinning at a constant rate like this, never slowing, slowing down or speeding up, my tangential acceleration will be zero, and therefore my true acceleration, my actual acceleration, will just be this normal component here. So because I know that, I'm going to make this my x direction, and I'll make this my y direction. I'm going to align my axes with the motion. It's just like a ramp problem. If I have a ramp and I have an object moving up that ramp, I'm going to make, I'm going to align my axes with the motion. X will be this way, Y will be that way. So, what forces do we have here? Well, of course we'll have the weight, no problem. And since we know it's a 2 kilogram spool, I can do 2 times 9.81 real quick and get the weight as 19.62. Next, let's talk about friction. Let's just say that this thing was not spinning at all. Well, 
this object would want to slide down this way, which would in turn mean that friction would be this way. Same thing if we were rotating just at a very slow speed. If we're spinning very, very slowly, our object's going to want to slide down, which means friction's going to want to oppose that motion and fight up. Now, the question says determine the maximum constant speed that this thing can have so that it does not slip up the rod. Again, that makes sense. If we're spinning really, really fast, this thing's going to want to fly off like this. So that's the mode we're thinking in. We're thinking in lots of speed instead of little or no speed. But be careful because by them changing this one word and changing it to minimum, the problem changes. Friction will be up the ramp rather than down. But as it is, since we're spinning so, so fast, the object wants to fly off, slide off that way, and friction will be opposing it. And of course, this is static friction. And of course, since we're saying maximum speed, we're saying that this thing spins so, so fast that this thing is literally just about to fly off, which means we need to be using all of the static friction that we can get. The maximum amount denoted by that mu s times n. So we have friction, gravity, and of course we must have a normal force. I mean these, this object and this metal shack thing are contacting each other, so there must be a normal force. Force is when two planes interact. And I'm trying to think about which way it's going to be because I mean, we have this touch interface here, we have this touch interface here, where is it going to be? A bit diff difficult to conceptualize, but notice my forces that I've argued so far. They're all pointing down in some way. Weight is totally down and the friction has a downwards component. But of course, when this thing is in operation, it's just going to be spinning in this circle. It will not be going up at all in the Y. So therefore, to battle out these downwards Y forces and force components, I'm thinking that the normal is going to have to be this way, with it, with an upwards Y component rather than the other option. This way would bring a downwards Y component and then check it out. All of our forces are downwards and therefore this thing must be going downwards. So my normal force is going to be perpendicular upwards. So the weight is totally in the negative y, but these two forces are going to have x and y components, so I need to find angles for them. We're given some directional information here, and we can figure out this angle by doing a inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent. That'll be a 36.87. So I'm going to go to my origin right here and make a little imaginary horizontal line. Here's our slant. Here's that horizontal line. Notice that this angle is the same thing. So our 36.87 is here. So that can be used to split up our friction. We can use the cosine to grab the negative x, and we can use the sine to grab the negative y. So that looks all set up. And with this being a 90 degree angle, I'll do a 90 minus, get a 53.13, and I can use the sine of 53.13 to figure out the y, and a cosine to figure out the negative x. So notice how I have a lot of negative x forces. That's okay in this case because I have negative or positive, positive x. That's okay because those are necessary to create this acceleration. 
it's because we have no motion, no acceleration in the y, that I must have force balance in the y. So again, going back to why I argued that the normal force is this way rather than that way. All right, so we got angles. So all that's left is just to do some forces in the x and some forces in the y. So here's my sum forces in the x. I know my mass is 2 kilograms. My acceleration in the x, well, I already know that. V squared over r. So V squared over r. Well, a bunch of unknowns here. Normal force, V, and r. Well, we can figure out the normal force by doing some forces in the y. So we'll figure that out in a moment. R. Do we know the radius of the circle of the motion that we're on? Got to be a bit careful there. I can imagine that the center of the circle that this thing is on is right here. Spinning around and around and around like that. So that is our R that we need to figure out. Well, we know that we have this length here as this 0.25. And with that, I think we have a right triangle going on. So I think we can just do the trick. Again, we know that this angle right here is that 36. If I do a 90 minus, so we can figure out that, that'd be great. And we know what happens when we do the 90 minus. So there is a 53.13 right here. So it looks like the R is going to be the hypotenuse times the sine of that angle to grab for us the opposite. So crunching that, we get a point 0.2. So I will put a point 0.2 right here. And once we pick up that normal force, we'll be good to go. So doing my sum forces in the y, I know that the acceleration in the y is zero. So when I sum my forces, they should all equal zero. And here's that. I can crunch that out and figure out that my normal force will equal, we'll get a positive 28.85, which I can then just plug in for my ends here and figure out that speed v. And running that, we'll get a 1.48 for that speed. So, a bit tricky of a problem. And as it usually is, the hardest stuff comes with setting up the dang thing. Once you set it up, once you got it in your sights, you can just launch your math and your trig and all that stuff. But what I always say is, if you see something moving in a circle, definitely try that normal tangential coordinate system. We had that centripetal normal acceleration, and because our speed was constant, because that rotation was constant, we luckily had no tangential acceleration we had to worry about. And also, conceptualizing the directions of those forces could be tough too. Definitely watch out if they hit you with minimum constant speed, like we talked about. That would mean that our friction force is actually going to be going up. And of course, make sure you know why. I always emphasize knowing the, the why behind why these things are the way they are. It really helps in keeping them in your head. All right, hope everything made sense. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments.